in a time when darkness overtakes light. A time when snow and ice blanket the earth and frost heaves the soil and bites at all things living. There is a place that withstands the hardships and allows life to propagate. A place hastily constructed from found materials where cheap plastic holds back the wind and provides the environment necessary for life to sustain itself. Where, with simple watering and the power of the sunlight, life is able to progress despite the snow and the ice and bring a harvest to the table. I haven't done a lot of videos uh, about this greenhouse because basically it's an experiment for me. I'm still learning about it, so it didn't seem fair to tell everybody what I've learned until I've actually learned it. Uh, and I'm still learning. Um, I just put this raised bed in in the fall and moved the one that was outside in here. Uh, it wasn't going to do anything out there for me over the winter and I thought I could use it as a little learning experiment in here. And we did pretty good. We had a, a green harvest earlier this year. And, and as far as learning and it teaching me things, it's, uh, it's kind of what I expected. The sun comes in and gets real hot. There's, a, there's some insulated sheathing that's painted black, incidentally enough, on the back side. And that's where the sun collects a lot. And I hope, hope that stores a little bit of heat. I know for a fact this bed stores a bit of heat because at the uh, height of the day the air temperature is about 90 degrees and I have a thermometer set here on the surface of the soil and that gets about down to 50 I think when temperatures reached around 10 degrees at night it was getting frost on the surface so I kind of I kind of buffer the outside temperature by about 10 to 20 degrees uh, at the lowest overnight so if it's 30 outside it's 50 in here which is ideal at least on the surface of the soil I don't know what the air temperature is it's less important as uh, as the temperature of the soil and you know that area right above it for me it's uh, served as a pretty good place to start some seedlings uh, at least in these trays although I was uh, sick two days last week and could not even get out of bed and I lost uh, a packet of cucumbers that I'll have to start again. It's um, kept this raspberry alive over the winter and it's been a nice place for our worms to uh, vacation through the frost and snow. Uh, it's plastic sheeting on the outside. There are windows that I found in our garage propped up against the front um, and they've they've done a lot better than the plastic did last year at insulating things. This is our second winter with this greenhouse. I built it before last winter, um, but it didn't really do anything until early spring where I was able to put some seedlings in here, get them out of the house, let them have some sun, and protect them from the cold. And that really paid off. I mean, if they were out, they would have died. Right now, this is just a sanctuary for the greens. Uh, kale, spinach, lettuces, things like that. We hope that during the summertime we'll be able to shade some of this off and keep some root vegetables in this soil as it's a bit more cultivated than the stuff that we have outside. Now if only there was a way for me to uh, control the aphid population in here. I looked online uh, to find some ladybugs and uh, they're not too expensive. It's about 2,000 ladybugs. It's a good number for about $18. But then it's $30 shipping. I cannot afford $50 for bugs. I'm sorry. I'll have to do something else. If anyone has any suggestions about a better place to get some ladybugs or a new method for controlling aphids in a greenhouse, I would certainly appreciate hearing about it. Thank you. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time. I hope it helps. Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Catch ya!